I'm going to introduce you a gentleman called Bernard Hyden, who's the Chief Strategy Officer of Schweitzer Group and the Creative Director of InStore. He's going to tell us more about his fabulous food processing place. Bernard. Good morning. So first of all, I'm not, not Austrian, I'm Swiss. This is a huge difference. So what I'm doing now with you, uh, before I will uh, explain who I am, I will explain you a little bit the global retail trends in food in Europe. I will do this in a speed dating because they just give me 10 minutes. I have 52 slides, so I'm very quick and because I'm Swiss, I'm also very precise. So, but first of all, who I am, I'm uh, Bernard Haydn. Like I say, I'm Swiss, 56. I'm a chief, grooving up as an architect uh, in Switzerland. And now I am a head of design of Interstore. I just will quick explain what's Interstore. And also a uh, head of sales of the Schweizer Group. So uh, Interstore and Schweizer is a global uh, shop fitting supplier, headquarter in South Tyrol. This is the German speaking part of Italy. We have around 1,000 employers and we do retail stores worldwide. Then they are in this company, there are two uh, branches. One is Interstore Design, it's the design company who is doing retail design, food and non-food. And there is Schweizer, who is the shop fitting company, project manager and prototype development, manufacturing, cooling system, lighting and fixture. And with these two companies, we are doing design and build. So we are designing stores around the world and we are building them also from scratch. That means everything what you see inside floor, lighting, ceiling, refrigerator, counter, all the shelving is everything coming out of our company. And we do this uh, for the most biggest food retailer in the world. And I think what's very interesting is we are working for cash and carry for hard discount, but also for Le Beau Marché, uh, Grande Epicerie in Paris. So the range is very big. But now the topic from to my speak. So I will just show you some examples from different companies where we are working at the moment and just explain a little bit what's happened. And then I also just want to explain you what are my three points or my vision uh, when we are talking about doing turnover or doing a higher margin or talking about EBIT. Because I think doing nice stories once, but uh, in the end making profit, that's what we want to talk about. So. First, I don't know, I, maybe some of you have seen already something of them. So there is a really clear uh, way like Aldi, Lidl, so the hard discount in Europe are going, so they do a trading up. So Aldi, Italy has done with Matteo Thun, who is a building architect, a project in Italy, who really just push up a regular uh, store from them in an upper scale supermarket. So all this hard discounter in Europe, they are not anymore a discounter. They are really going in a way like a medium level supermarket. This is a clear tendency and they are also starting to talk about companies like us where they talk about design. So this is a really clear way how these counters are going. And also when you are looking this, they talk about storytelling, visual merchandising. So that's why also in Europe now, a discounter is not a discounter like it was 10 years ago. There is a clear trading up from these discounters also in, uh, in cities. Then what's also happened, all the big ones, the really big ones, they are normally outside, not central in, in the cities, in the big ones. They are going in cities, like Carrefour is doing this. We just opened uh, three or four Carrefours in different uh, cities in Europe where they make gourmet stores. So they do smaller stores, 2,000 square meter, also upscaled in, in high frequency location and the best will be if there is Chanel and Gucci next to it. So a completely different client and also not a client where you can drive with the car. So everybody is doing this. Also Rewe, Edeka, Carrefour, Leclerc, all 
this also the cash and carry people in Europe start to go more local in the city with different kind of formats, smaller formats, and also with up higher level formats because everybody is saying the, the cheap market, the discount market is set with a lot of uh, competitors, so there is a different market. So this is, this is a Carrefour Madrid uh, downtown, just opened two years ago, very successful. Now they have, I think, 15 in Spain, but really just in high level uh, location. And then, also, when we are talking about medium, low level, what clients like Super U in France, Super U in France is not a discounter, but it's really more low item level supermarket, they start to talk about emo emotion. So they start to talk about, they work with the product, they do uh, visual merchandising, they engage with the people. So this communication and not just have an iPad, have somebody who is talking with you behind counters is a big thing, like uh, in Super U in France. So when you see this, this is for France, a low level supermarket, but just in a simple way done, very emotional. So this emotional, bringing in stores is a very important uh, trend at the moment. So we talk about, like I say, low-level supermarket. Very simple, easy, but with a lot of feeling and warm inside. And then, I don't know, no, somebody uh, knows Iper in Italy, one of the most successful supermarket company, private-owned. And Italy has a concept since uh, 1976, they don't make holes in the floor. So everybody who is in the food business knows when I have a refrigerated showcase, I need a lot of holes for water, electricity, and everything. And when I have to move something, I need a lot of construction people. So Ipper has nothing in the floor. They go with everything over the ceiling. So that means they are 100% flexible with everything what they do. Means when they have seven elements sushi, and in uh, one year, nobody cares about sushi. They want to have something else. He's easily, he can easily move all this. So this is a very important thing, what I'm also show you later, uh, that this flexibility, because also this is a flexibility for shareholders when they invest money, they can do something, but they can change. Today, this is very difficult. So that's Ipper in Italy. And then, also, without going in the floor, you don't need all these heavy counters. So you can make everything a little bit more like uh, a market feeling. So there, if somebody's in Milan, there are a lot of uh, Ippers in the Milan area till Bologna, and they are really fantastic in uh, make people hungry to buy something. And then another trend what's going on is the permanent pop-ups not in the supermarket. So chains like Rewe, Edeka, Migro, e all this uh, big, also Carrefour, they are going with pop-ups in the city, for example, like Avec in the railway station for three weeks, do something crazy. This was just, you cannot pay cash. It was just pay over app and then go away. So this jump in somewhere, do something what's not uh, usual and go away, keep people talking about you and they don't forget you in an unusual way. I think this is a very important point and there are companies like Rewe in Germany who is doing this in a very good way. Avec is a, a Swiss food company, a smaller one with around uh, 1,200 stores in Germany and in uh, Switzerland. They are more in newspaper convenience business. So this was this pop-up in the railway station in Zurich. And then also when I say how I can make more money, not having everywhere the same assortment. So when we are talking about uh, supermarkets, the most of them, they have three lines of products. It's the, bu the budget line, the medium basic line, and the premium line. 
So Migro in Switzerland starts uh, three years ago opening stores where they don't have the budget line. So that's railway station, airports, or also in areas where a higher income is. So they don't go with this. So you even have not the choice by the cheap milk. You just have to medium and high. And they do this really concentrated on uh, mappings where the population has a little bit more money or where the population has no choice to buy something else, like on a Sunday in Switzerland, there are no stores open, just airports and uh, railway station. And then they do this. So they go in these stores, they, in this location, a little bit lower space, around 600 till 1,800, and they don't go with the low budget assortment. And with this, and nobody is angry because uh, number one, they are happy to buy something on a Friday night, 12 o'clock or Sunday, and number two, in regions where people have money, they don't care. So, but I think that's just an additional format to make money based on a clear also strategy with what kind of assortment they are going. This has nothing to do with the stores looks nice. And then everything is also a little bit smaller because they don't go with this small line. So five minutes. Then what happened 2020? And I just want to quick talk about three things that are really important for me. And I'm not talking about design. Number one is branding. Like I say, number two is flexibility. And number three is HMR. I know HMR in Middle East is not really trendy, but in Europe, it's without, you are not surviving in the future. So home meal replacement. I will just uh, explain this. When I'm talking about branding, what we are doing in certain companies like Dunn's in Ireland, we are creating in a regular food store brands. Brands they create from the supermarket chain, give them brands an identity, maybe a face, but a clear co uh, corporate, and place them as a brand in the store without, without making the basic assortments in bread, fish, in the fresh uh, areas smaller. So, two minutes. That means, this is done in Ireland. 4,220 square meters, 120 million euro turnover. Highest square meter turnover in uh, Europe. They here we integrate these bread brands like Sheridan's. Sheridan's is a cheese brand, but they have a regular cheese sorti assortment. It's just self-service. People cutting for the, for the, for the self-service, so it's like in a cheese monker in a small one. That's the butcher in a 120 million turnover uh, supermarket. And then in the grocery, they do the opposite. They do a really clear price strategy as a grocery. So then I don't show the movies because otherwise I need too long time. If you want to see the movies, then we go, uh, we can do this later. Markus, can we click? Okay. Flexibility, this movie will show. What means flexibility? So se what I'm doing with fish seven days in a week. So in Europe, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nobody's buying fish. They, they wanna have it Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what I'm doing with my fish counter. So I don't look now. She's always showing me how many minutes I have. Uh, what I'm doing then. So when I say Iper is not doing holes, so uh, we, creating a system that I, that I can do service and self-service by myself during the week. Move it weekly or make it bigger and smaller. And here, this is just an idea to show, but I will show you this movie. And this is a project for Leclerc in France, where everything what you see can be changed. So, if this is working, yes. So. We can make the fish smaller, we can put elements away and make uh, the meat bigger, and we can do this weekly, monthly, or once a year. It's working? Yeah. So Leclerc is a, fa is a, a cooperative in France. It's the second biggest after Carrefour, but it's 
much more successful than Carrefour in France. Every owner has just three stores. He cannot have more as three stores. This was a refurbishment from uh, three to five months. It's opening uh, last week. And he can move the pastry in a very crazy way to the butcher and the butcher to the pastry. So everything is really movable. All He can also do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a counter self-service and just move the glass Friday, Saturday. He is uh, service. That's very important for him because this is medium low level. So it's not high level supermarket. And in this way, he has also to take care of labor costs. So he can play with this. So last one is HMR. So this is a very nice example in Kiev in the Ukraine. High level supermarket. What can be done with HMR. Good wine was a wine seller eight years ago. Today it's a supermarket. They make 20% of the food what they are selling in-house as an HMR uh, product. They have, in, they have around uh, 2,500 square meter trading area, 200 employers, and they do 65 million euro turnover with this store in the Ukraine. <coughs> Everybody's saying what's going on in the Ukraine. They have 2% of the population have the money and they buy in this store. So it's unbelievable what they are doing. So, but the interesting thing is with bringing in this home meal replacement, so means that somebody is doing sushi in the store and I can take it away, everybody knows, but they do it in meat, fish, bread, in all the categories. And you really see how they pack it, they bring it in the freezer and then they go away. So they have in this 2,500 square meters, 150 seats. So everywhere are seats in this store where I can also eat and drink, of course drink, wine in Ukraine, can eat and drink. So in the end, this is not a supermarket, this is a restaurant with selling a lot of uh, food and of course wine because they are a quantity wine seller. And what they are also doing they are delivering the most of the four and five star hotels in the Ukraine with bread, meat, fish. So they are also having, they have a second channel where they are a wholesale, a wholesaler for all this format. So then freshness in-house production is the most important brand uh, key for them. And this is just one of the owner who is just then explaining uh, how this collaboration was. So that's it, I'm too late. If you want to do successful stores, we are here. We can show you a lot of things. I can also show you these movies I'm not showed, and thank you very much.